How to graph y equals the sine of x using the unit circle dance with proper vocabulary. This is part of the family of functions series. You will need paper and straight edge. We suggest you create grids similar to the ones at the right as needed and press pause as needed anytime during the video. Graph y equals the sine of x. Before we begin, we need to recall the unit circle values. Here they all are. Press pause if you need to. Also, we need to recall in what quadrants the sign is a positive number and in what quadrants the sign is a negative number. Press pause again. The sign is a positive number in quadrants 1 and 2, and we'll illustrate that here. Remember that the sign is the second coordinate of the point. The sine is a negative number in quadrants 3 and 4, as you can see right here. To assist you in remembering the unit circle values, let's separate these values into what I will call families. We'll first look at what I call the axes family. So these are the values you should know from going on the axes. Press pause as needed. Resume when you're ready. Sine of 0 is 0. That's the second coordinate of the point there at 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of pi is 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And the sine of 2 pi goes back to 0 at 0. Pause is needed. Let's go into the pi over 6 family. Pause to complete these. Sine of pi over 6 is positive 1 half, as is the sine of 5 pi over 6. But the sine of 7 pi over 6 in the third quadrant is negative 1 half. And the sine of 11 pi over 6 is also negative 1 half in the fourth quadrant. Pause is needed. Pi over 4 family. Pause to complete these values. Sine of pi over 4 is positive radical 2 over 2. Similarly, the sine of 3 pi over 4 is positive radical 2 over 2. Sine of 5 pi over 4 is negative radical 2 over 2. 5 pi over 4 is in the third quadrant. And also 7 pi over 4 is in the fourth quadrant, negative radical 2 over 2. Pause is needed. And finally, the pi over 3 family. Pause to complete those. Sine of pi over 3 is positive radical 3 over 2. Sine of 2 pi over 3 is positive radical 3 over 2. Sine of 4 pi over 3 is negative, that same number, and sine of 5 pi over 3, negative radical 3 over 2. Pause is needed. So here's a quick summary of all of the families. So the sine of the axis values is either 1, negative 1, or 0, depending upon where it lands. Sine of pi over 6 values are either positive or negative 1 half, again depending upon the quadrant. Sine of pi over 4 family, positive or negative radical 2 over 2, again depending on the quadrant. And the sine of pi over 3 values, positive or, neg positive or negative radical 3 over 2. Pause is needed. So to graph y equals the sine of x, we do need to do two things before we begin. First of all, the x-axis must be calibrated in fractional parts of pi. And the y values, radical 3 over 2, radical 2 over 2, need to be approximated with decimals. So let's first look at the first part. These are the unit circle values. These are the values of pi that we're supposed to know. What is the least common denominator for these values? Press pause to figure that out. And 12 is the least common denominator. So when we create our axes, we're going to calibrate the x-axis to show every pi over 12. And we did that right here. Create your own trig axes with a centimeter ruler. 
Let each half of a centimeter represent pi over 12. That means three centimeters would be six pi over 12 or pi over two, because six times 0.5 is three. And 12 centimeters would be two pi. On the y-axis, we're gonna let one unit be represented by two centimeters. And you might ask why. We call that pi over three is about a little bit bigger than one. So pi over three is four pi over 12, which would be four half centimeters or two centimeters. That way the units will be square. So go ahead and draw your axes, press pause, resume when you're ready. The y values need to be approximated with decimals, as I mentioned before. These are the two we need to get to. And we're going to go to the nearest thousandth or three decimal places. Use your calculator to do that. Pause is needed. And using a calculator, we came up with these values. So the square root of 3 divided by 2 is about 0.866. The square root of 2 divided by 2 is about 0.707. Please make note of these values as we will use them often. Press pause. Draw your axes or print and use the PDF that we talked about earlier. So here's our axes. Again, recall the decimal approximations. We're going to create a table for each quadrant, including the endpoints of the quadrant. Uh, and then plot the ordered pairs one quadrant at a time. Copy and complete the table for quadrant one. Press pause, resume when you're ready. So those are the values there. So, and those are the decimal approximations. Plot the points one by one. Press pause. So we start at the origin. We're going to show it on the unit circle as well as plotting it on the axes. Pi over 6 is 1 half. It's the second coordinate of that point. So pi over 6, 1 half. Pi over 4, radical 2 over 2, which is about 0.7. Pi over 3 is about 0.866. And at pi over 2, it's exactly 1. So there's the first quadrant. Copy and complete the table for quadrant two and press pause to do so. So those are our values there. Again, positive in the second quadrant. Plot the points, pause to do that. And two pi over three is about 0.866. The sine of three pi over four is about 0.7. Sine of pi over six, five pi over six rather, is exactly a half. And the sine of pi is back to zero. Third quadrant, copy and complete the table for quadrant three. And those are our values and approximations. So plot the points, press pause to do so. So 7 pi over 6, we're now into the third quadrant, so the value is exactly negative a half. The sine of 5 pi over 4 is negative radical 2 over 2, about negative 0.7. Sine of 4 pi over 3 is uh, about negative 0.866. And 3 pi over 2, comma, negative 1. And finally, the fourth quadrant. Complete that table. Plot the points, press pause to do so. So 5 pi over 3, the sign is negative radical 2 over 2. So uh, 5 pi over 3, comma, negative 0.866. 7 pi over 4, comma, about negative 0.7. 11 pi over 6, negative a half exactly. And 2 pi back to 0. 
connect the points as follows. It's a full frown or something we'll call concave down, coffee cup down, and a full smile or concave up, coffee cup up. Pause as needed, resume when you're ready. Let's discuss some terminology about this curve. The shape of the curve is called a wave. It's a series of frowns and smiles. Pause as needed. Here the curve is concave down. Here the curve is concave up. The point where the curve changes concavity, that is it changes from concave down to concave up, right there, that point. Or if it goes from concave up to concave down, concave up to concave down, those points are called an, are inflection points, or sometimes they're called points of inflection. So the top point on a frown is called a maximum point. It's a maximum point because the Y coordinate is its largest or maximum value. The bottom point on a smile is called a minimum point. It's a minimum point because the Y coordinate is its smallest or minimum value. Pause is needed. There are five what we call points of interest or key points on a sine wave. The maximum point, there's one in, in a wave, there's a minimum point, and there are three points of inflection. Those are the three, I'm sorry, the five points of interest. Since the sine curve waves or repeats, we say the graph is periodic, and the period of the wave is 2 pi, meaning it starts to repeat every 2 pi. Pause is needed. Now here's the graph of y equals sine x, x from negative 4 pi to 4 pi inclusive. Since the sine curve seems to be continuously waving along to the left and to the right, the domain of the sine function is all real numbers. Okay, the x values, all real numbers are used up here. However, the range of the sine function only goes from 1 to negative 1 inclusive. So using notation, the domain, we usually write the script R for real numbers, a set of real numbers. And the range is a set of all y's, so it's such as y is a member of the real numbers, and y is between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. This video explained the graph of the sine function and discussed terminology in great detail. However, you do not need all this detail when you just want to graph the sine function. Watch the quick graph video as well for the method you will usually use. It's quick.